the topic of this present uh, webinar is uh, cotton blue disease, a new virus disease in Alabama cotton. Uh, up until really uh, the last two or three years, uh, given the long history of cotton production in, Al in Alabama and other southeastern states, uh, we've never really had an issue with a virus disease in cotton. Uh, now, in Arizona, there is a white fly transmitted virus, but but surprisingly here, we've, we've not run into problems uh, with this type of disease in this area in the past. The symptom patterns showed up about th uh, two or three years ago, uh, maybe longer than that, according to the comments from some crop consultants, but certainly in 2016 some unique symptoms were noticed in cotton in either barber county or tallapoosa county uh, the symptoms showed up again the following year in those two areas uh, samples were collected and the uh, resulting disease was identified as being caused by the cotton leaf roll dwarf uh, dwarf virus which is the causal agent of cotton blue disease since we were alerted to the fact that uh, that the virus was present, uh, a more vigorous survey of cotton in Alabama was done in 2018, and we'll talk about the distribution in a moment. But again, more samples were collected, uh, some genomics work, sequencing was done, and again, uh, the virus was uh, identified as either cotton leaf roll dwarf virus or a very close relative and there are always some differences among strains and that's where the uh, issue showed up and then in 2000 for 2019 since we had a number of good samples collected some additional gene sequencing was done and it turns out that the Alabama isolates were confirmed as a strain of the cotton leaf dwarf, uh, leaf dwarf virus you know, right now, uh, as I said, we did some surveying in 2018, and cotton blue disease was identified in 24 Alabama counties. Uh, most of the symptoms were collected in between September, which is really when the disease was first observed in cotton, until uh, uh, the first hard frost. But however, some of the positive samples also come out of uh, uh, defoliated stalks were collected in cotton fields in uh, in South Alabama in January, February, and March. But once the disease was recognized as having shown up last fall, some sampling was done in Georgia uh, as well as Mississippi, and there were a number of counties in both of those states in cotton producing areas where the virus was confirmed. And then in February, some samples were collected in South Carolina from fields that had the accentuated, accentuated verticality symptom pattern that we've associated with blue disease in the United States, and they also tested positive. So, uh, and also some samples were also taken last fall from um, uh, several counties in the Florida Panhandle. So right now we have five states where this particular disease has been identified. The cotton leaf roll dwarf virus uh, is transmitted by the cotton aphid. There may be some other aphids involved in the spread of this virus. It, that's the only means of transmission. It first was identified in Africa in the late 40s, uh, but it had a much greater impact on cotton production when it showed up in Brazil and Argentina in the uh, late 1880s, early 1990s, where yield losses up to 80% uh, were reported. Uh, other countries where the uh, virus has been identified in cotton include India, Thailand, and the island of Timor, which is in the Indi Indonesian archipelago. In addition, there's a very closely related aphid transmitted virus called cotton bunchy top uh, in Australia. And it turns out the resistance uh, that was identified for cotton bunchy top in Australia has also been used as the basis of our resistant varieties in, the, in South America. So um, these viruses are very closely related and the mechanisms for resistance appear to be uh, identical. As I mentioned before, uh, we do have an aphid vector. The main aphid vector is the uh, 
uh, cotton aphid, but as I said, there may be some other aphids involved. Uh, usually aphids are not considered a major pest in cotton. They kind of show up uh, in June. Uh, populations will increase uh, slowly over time. Then a typically a fungal disease shows up in July and thins out the population to the point that they don't cause damage. But there is a possibility um, uh, uh, that the, uh, you know, the several virus, uh, aphids are involved in virus transmission. And the other point where the arrow is pointing in the B image is that there are some symptoms associated just with the aphid, uh, aphids feeding on cotton. They will roll the leaves. That's also a symptom pattern that we associate with the virus. But uh, there are some subtle differences in the symptoms. And, and at this point in time, we've, we've not identified the virus uh, in cotton in June. The symptom patterns vary greatly by the uh, cotton variety, the time of year, uh, probably uh, also growth stage. The most notable symptoms uh, up close are is the, is the puckering and rugosity of the uh, uh, leaves in the top of the plant, which so far is generally shown up in September. Uh, in some cases, as in B and C images, they, the leaves may roll down or roll up, and I already mentioned that in association with the uh, with the aphid, but the look is a little bit different. Um, another symptom is the uh, deep vein, veination color. In this case, the phytogen variety is uh, uh, kind of a maroon color, and then in the final image, E, uh, just some subtle rugosity in the leaves, but uh, that particular plant tested positive for the virus. So it, so the symptoms are not real uh, severe, at least in the, sometimes in the terminals of the plant. It, it, the disease is rather deceptive in comparison with some other virus diseases uh, that, I've, uh, that I'm familiar with. Uh, some advanced symptoms that show up in September and October was, as in image A, a distinctive maroon coloration of the upper stems and also the petioles. Uh, I mentioned the accentuated verticality. These plants tend to stretch out and continue to grow. Uh, they do shed uh, set squares in the terminals, but those squares never develop into blooms and of course uh, never develop into bowls. So the plants keep on growing as you can see in image C where you have a, a normal uh, crop down in the canopy, then the plants began to grow off and uh, did not produce any bowls. So you get a very unusual growth pattern. One of the other issues you run into with virus diseases, particularly in what in essence is a, an annual crop, is there, there has to be some other re, uh, reservoir hosts out there where the virus can survive uh, between growing seasons, at least for the cotton. And some survey work uh, this winter and early spring showed that uh, some weeds are potential reservoirs of this virus. Now, one of them is henbit. Um, we did find uh, virus in, in uh, uh, virus in henbit. Uh, however, that plant doesn't persist very long. Another, uh, we got positives in white clover and also evening evening primrose, and those plants are either perennials or uh, maybe biennials. So there's a possibility that uh, that there is some carryover of the virus in, in some of the weed populations we have in the field. The other possible potential source is cotton regrowth out of stalks. And this year, particularly in Georgia, where Hurricane Michael de destroyed a lot of cotton, the plants were left in the field. They began to sprout uh, in late March and early April, and, and they tested positive for the virus. The only uh, situation was we did, may not have had any aphids there, and we, so we really don't know what impact uh, that might have on the early season spread of this virus, either in the cotton or perhaps some other weed host. But uh, all of the images in uh, all the plants in these images that are shown did test positive uh, for the virus, and in the image on the right hand side you can see the early season regrowth uh, on a cotton stalk. 
as far as management of, of cotton blue disease, things are very fluid at this point in time. As you can imagine, this is a new uh, disease in cotton. We really don't have any established uh, uh, procedures in place for managing this disease. We could only look at some of the sources of virus that we've identified up until this point and perhaps uh, manage those sources of virus as a means of maybe slowing or interrupting the spread of this disease into, uh, into cotton, and one of which would be stock destruction, as I've already uh, discussed. In, uh, we do have cotton can overwinter here. It will sprout in uh, late winter, early spring. If we got aphids on the plants that were infected with the virus, uh, we could see some spread from that point. I mentioned the winter weeds and some of the perennial weed issues. Uh, essentially there, the growers can either go in and burn down their winter weeds to keep the fields clean. The other option is to come in with deep tillage and particularly in the fall, and plant a winter cover crop, and that way the overseasoning of the cotton stalks is taken care of. Uh, and then one other point that showed up last year is that the, the disease was more prominent, more damaging in June than in May planted cotton. So there's the possibility that getting in with a little earlier planting day, particularly in Southwest Alabama, where the disease was more prevalent and more damaging, might be an effective means of avoiding uh, some damage uh, from the virus. As a result of the appearance of this disease in Alabama cotton, as well as in our neighboring states, we do have a regional project in place to try and begin to address some questions with respect to the distribution uh, of the disease in the Southeast, as well as the progression of the disease uh, in cotton. We're trying to determine whether or not it has an impact on yield. Now, it seemed like in some of the fields in Baldwin County, there certainly was a lot of damage and very poor bowl set in some situations, but that still needs to be confirmed. Uh, right now, more than likely, the most effective means of managing a virus disease like this will be through breeding. We do have some sources of resistant germplasm from South America, and which actually originated in Australia. Hopefully, uh, the strain of the virus we have here can be managed with the uh, uh, resistance that we already have in the cotton gene pool. Hopefully, we won't have to go out and find a new source of resistance. There's a possibility of managing the aphid vector or manipulating the crop to manage the aphid vector. Uh, there's some, still some questions about basic biology questions about the transmission of the causal virus, and then we need a faster diagnostic procedures because the current PCR procedure is a two day procedure and it takes or costs about $30 per sample. So it's kind of uh, costly as well. So we're looking for a rapid uh, diagnostic program to uh, simplify the diagnosis of uh, this disease. So that, that kind of covers the topics that I wanted to uh, mention with respect, with respect to, uh, to cotton blue disease. As I said, there's a, a fairly extensive program ongoing in Mississippi, in Georgia, and in Alabama to try and address the distribution and control of this disease. And hopefully we'll have some information in the fall, at least with respect to um, the resistance of some of the varieties we have out there, as well as some, uh, uh, maybe some uh, input on the impact of this disease on cotton yield. Thank you.